Hey guys, Asian boy here. So, a new gas mask came in as usual, and um, this time it's a what was it? The XM24 E4, I believe it's called, which is a or the nickname Grasshopper. It's a um. Now I could get any of my information wrong. I want you, I want you guys to take everything I say with a grain of salt. I, I'm not too well educated if I make a mistake and I realize it during editing I will put it in captions if I um, Don't if I do make a mistake and I don't caption it that most likely means I am unaware of my false claim or my Of a false comment or anything I say and if I do make something that is incorrect you guys should correct me in the comments you guys should correct me if I ever make something wrong or I make I say something that's just not completely true or if I just get the name wrong right <laughs> so um, from what I've heard this gas mask was used a little bit during the Vietnam War right for like rat tunnels and stuff right but the issue was um, it never really went into production and I believe the reason why it was possibly because I guess the war ended by that time or so but I could be wrong maybe it didn't maybe it was still valid back then I don't know I can't remember exactly why never went into production right but you know it never did right it's just how it is so um so it's it's the it has XM in its name because it's a prototype every gas mask Oh, uh, every um grasshopper. I'm gonna call it grasshopper. Every gra grasshopper gas mask is a prototype. They're all prototypes technically, because they never went into production. So that's pretty rare, though, right? So it's already rare in itself. All right? I got this one for 120 something dollars, 24, 25 dollars, right? But you know, but it only came with the mask itself. All well, some come with the carrier and the manual, and that and that's like 100, 200, I think. 225 now so you know I only was able to afford the mask and um so yeah this was a this is a this is a cheek filter gas mask Ooh, look at that this is a cheek filter gas mask it's also called the grasshopper because it has that insect look it kind of looks very buggy like a grasshopper right um I don't I don't think this came with a with the filters in already. I don't, yeah, this one's like, is it empty? No, it actually has the filter inside. Oh, huh. that's interesting. I don't believe the filter contain asbestos. <laughs> I don't think so. At this, around the time of this production, right? But I could be wrong. I also don't want to mess it up. I would like to take out the cheek filter just to see what it, you know, looks like, right? Cause I never seen it and videos don't, a lot of YouTube videos don't really show you. So I guess here, let me turn my flash. I can look inside. So let me just get the straps out of the way. So oh, also the lens is cracked. That's the downside of this. Um, does this just clip off? Take a little rubber tab. Hmm. Okay. Oh, I see. You can clip that off. And then here's the filter. Look at that. That's interesting. So this is like a P3 filter, most likely. I doubt there's anything more to it. Um, I wonder if this top part twists in any way. I can see why this would be hard to change the filter. While in the battlefield, and I can see why some cheek filters were a bit of a flaw. So the reason why this is a cheek filter, usually the filter is outside with the canister, like um, other filters I've showed you, right? But this is obviously not one of the case. This is a cheek filter, it's what it's called. And the um, thing about cheek filters is they're meant to be lightweight and take up less space. Because uh, if you've ever been in a claustrophobic area with a canister filter, you know, sometimes it will bump into you or things around you and that gets annoying, right? So the way they um, 
So they came up with this design to put the filter in the cheek. In the cheek. And um, that would, in theory, make it more lightweight and easy to carry and blah, 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 right? And wouldn't bump into everything. Right? Because this is a pretty lightweight mask. It's very, ooh, oops. It's very compact, too, if you can see. And um, uh, the only downside is, well, if the filter were to be running out or to not be functioning, um, you'd have to take off the mask, open up the inside, uh, um, take out these little rivets, right, and take out the cheek filter and put in a new one, which is struggling while your fingernails are like bleeding, you're dying, from, you know, toxic air or whatever. But so that was the design flaw. Um, but some did use this. Um, I'll put up a picture of uh, these two soldiers looking um, wearing it, which looks like they were in Vietnam at the time from the looks of it. And uh, what else? The only um, issue with this it was uh, so some some white white riot, <laughs> riot policemen did use this mask because obviously it was compact and visor could go over it. Uh, and um, some rat tunnels, uh, well, I think that was the name. I, I don't think, oh, they probably had more um, an actual real term, but during the Vietnam War, when they went into um, the Viet Cong uh, rat tunnels, they, you know, would sometimes tear gas and stuff. So I'm assuming they'd use this, right? They'd use this cheek filter mask. Cause I imagine that being in a claustrophobic tiny tunnel, I assume this would, you know, this would be, a lot more practical even though the filter is thinning it could already have expired and you know have you killed <laughs> you know but it is yes it is a lot more compact and a lot more lightweight and if you're in the claustrophobic area I'd actually probably go for something like this and it all out looks fucking cool <laughs> if I get any of the information I just said wrong you're allowed to correct me I'll probably put a caption to you trying to um, talk more about it this is what it looks like from the front. This is what it looks like from the back. And this is what it looks like on the inside. It has a nasal cup right here. And although the lens are big, this uh, the nasal cup kind of covers most of it. If you kind of like hide this, maybe if you hide it, yeah. Look at that, you have all of this space and all of this view. So now what you're gonna see me do is put it on my face. And uh, from last time I remembered, I don't think cheek filters had asbestos or anything to kill me, but I could always be wrong, but I'll do it for you guys. Hello, so here's the cheek filter, the XM 28E4, maybe? Uh, or Grasshopper, as the name is known as. Um, I will now put it on my face. So this is what it looks like now on my face. I look like a grasshopper. <laughs> Doesn't really fit. Well, it's not really too tight on my face. Let me just turn this a little more. So this is what I look like with the mask on. All right. I assume this is the exhale. The exhale valve. It's not really tightly on my face, and I can't do a, um, a pressure check. I cannot do a pressure check because it's a cheek filter, so I can't just inhale like this. The lens is also cracked, so I wouldn't, so I wouldn't make an airtight seal, so I would, I, would, I would never know what it feels like fully sucked into my face. Taking that off, um, I feel very uncomfortable every time I heal, heal, inhale, because I do feel some something tapping my face that could just be normal dust but whatever it is it could also go into my lungs so it's not very lovely to uh imagine exactly uh one of the straps kind of came off which is a bit strange let me just fix that um it is lightweight it does not feel heavy on my face at all in any way definitely lighter than the GP5 when you have the filter on, right? Uh, I never had a raw filter on my face, if that's what you're wondering. I, I, I use a P3 filter with an adapter. 
but this definitely feels a little bit lighter. It probably feel more lighter if it was um, tight on my face, but it's a bit loose, so when I look around, it kind of like shimmies. Um, it's definitely comfortable. I'll, I'll tell you that. Let me put it on my face one more time. So this is what I look like from the side, and this is what I look like in front. Uh, if you can see, um, so I do have a big lens on my face, but due to the nasal cup, I can my finger disappears right about there. If it's right here, I can't see. Um, I can't see at the if I'm if I'm looking straight at you, I cannot see the bottom of my tripod. If I back up. I get an amazing view though, I can see everything just fine. Looking down is a little bit difficult, but I'm not usually looking down unless there's like a Viet Cong staff under me. Um, this is this is definitely comfortable. It's, now that it's a lot tight on my face and not loose, looking around is not an issue at all. Looking up and down is fine. It, it's a little bit a little bit front heavy right here, but that's about it. Yeah, this is the XL valve, but I'll see a little bit of air comes out of here. Um, I hope I'm not inhaling anything bad, but it's a. But I mean, we'll, we'll find out when I die. Um, I will. I have a. I'll. Hmm, let me take this off. This. I hope hearing sounds fine. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put on my little helmet to show you guys to um show you guys what it looks like with the helmet. Um, the only issue is it has a. Soviet star on it, like a little red star, but just ignore it. It's really just an M1. If I remember correctly, it's a M1 American helmet, but just ignore the star. I did it when I was young. I didn't know, so. And for the sake of it, I'll wear it with a straw hat just for the giggles. Right? So now I have on my face. This is what it looks like with the straw hat, just in case you guys were wondering. Right? This is a little bit goofy. Now uh, here's what it looks like with the helmet. So I am now wearing the helmet on my face, ignoring the star, right? This is what I look like. Definitely looks no, no problem at all, does not get in my way. Fits just perfectly, like as if it was made to be or something. That was strange, huh? Oh, that that be weird? It could not be made to be American mask with the American helmet. <laughs> so now, that's what I look like. So I look like from the back, right? So now this, so yeah, with this helmet and everything, no issue. It, I love it. It's actually amazing. It's a, it's a real shame that this mask never made into production. I'd love to buy a P3 filter for this, but sadly they don't make, make that anyone. <coughs> Sorry, I'm just. I felt like I inhaled a, du a fat piece of dust or something when I was talking. That's why I like paused at one point, and um, I uh, I just I don't know. I, I I just hope it wasn't anything bad. Um, that's what it looks like with me with the mask on. Now my hair is all messed up, right? Yep. Right, and I gotta go to work after this. If you guys didn't know, after, before I um, when I record these videos, I'm always like 10, 20 minutes before I going to work so I'm always kind of quick when I do this do these videos but yeah no this this was perfect like it was it worked just fine it was, uh, surprisingly amazing and comfortable when I'd so wear that in a, in a battlefield like if I had to go in the tunnel I'd, I'd, I'd go for that if it worked of course <laughs> without the crack lens and you know expired filter but I really need to get rid of this the star that I painted on. 
it bothers me because it's not supposed to be like that, you know. So it might look weird, but that's so strange. It's weird. It's honestly strange because um, this mask it just it has this netting in the foot. It's like a metal n netting. It's very thin too. I don't feel any charcoal in it. Well, is that charcoal right there? I feel that's like sticks of charcoal maybe. I feel something like it's like solid. It's like metal mesh. I don't think this charcoal in this is it. Is there? Is it just a P3 filter? Hmm, that's interesting. Yeah, I don't know. I'd like to know how to take this off. Because I, I, I'm I, curious what it looks like without it, but I'm not going to mess it up. Yeah, I'm sure somewhere, somewhere someone had did a YouTube video on it. So yeah, it just fits like that. And then I just, and it has this hole right here. And I just put it over this uh, plastic rivet. And I just have to try to fit it through. Try to pop it in. There you go. Yeah, that's pretty easy to do. So yeah, from the looks of it, it looks like you can take off the nasal cup entirely, actually. With the, with the rivets, just pop the entire thing off, and then you can see the inside. That's interesting. That really is. Um, but yeah, that's about it. I don't think I'm forgetting anything else. Uh, so, hey guys. So, now, what I'm going to be doing is uh, I'll be wearing this mask with my M1 pot. Uh... Oh, American helmet, you know, the one they use in Vietnam, except this one's like, I'm pretty sure it's a reproduction. I hope this is a reproduction. If it was the original, I feel bad for drilling, ho drilling holes into it. Um, what do you call it? Uh, and ignore the red, the Soviet star. I did that when I was younger. I was like 15 at the time, and I did it. I'm 18 now, but, you know. So I'm going to show you what it looks like when I wear the helmet and the uh, gas mask, and what it looks like when I'm aiming with it. Oh, there goes my mask. I don't need this. I was actually recording. I was just recording a different video and I needed this on because the gas mask smelled bad, so But this gas mask does not smell bad So and it's super and it's hella comfortable too So this is what it looks like with the gas mask and the helmet on Such a cool mask man. This, this thing is so cool and it's so Lightweight and comfortable like I wish they made more of these right Sadly, this one has a cracked lens. You're just gonna have to live with that one So this might look like okay. Well, okay, let's turn it off. I can see everything around me 100% perfect Other gas mask there's like a bump right here and it, I, it would be ghosting Right, but this one the line right here is so thin I see everything just fine. I can see what's under me just good. If the nasal cup was a little bit lower, I could see more. But my vision cuts off right here, where you can't even really see. But it cut, it cuts off just a little bit. But this thing covers so much vision. I can see so much with this thing on. And this is what I look like when I am um, aiming. When I do this, the, the helmet does kind of get in the way. It cut, cuts off this much of my vision, and the nasal cut, cuts off this one, so I'm kind of prone to only seeing this much. But I, I look just fine. I can see just fine. It's not getting my way anyway. This thing does not get in my way. So perfect. And I'm left-handed too. So gas mask filters are on sides. is annoying for me. But this is just fine. I can see just fine. This is not in my way. So that's what it looks like with uh when you're holding a gun. Uh, I posted this on Instagram, and a lot of people said this does not contain asbestos. They didn't really provide any proof that it doesn't contain asbestos, but I guess I can hope for the best. Um, and, but I mean, one can only hope. <laughs> but that's about it. Um. Uh, you can take off the nasal cup on this. I, w I will not be doing that because it seems like a lot of work for me and I'm a lazy guy. But if you, I mean, if this gets like 100 likes in the far future, maybe I'll go back to this gas mask and take off the nasal cup and show you. But but I mean, 100 likes seems like a lot and that's only because I don't want to do it. 
But I'll do it if you guys get me 100 likes. Um, but yeah, that's the review of the XM Grasshopper Gas Mask. It was like X, XM, I forgot the name already, XM 21E4 or something like that. I don't remember. But this is the review of the Grasshopper Gas Mask. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, make sure you guys like and subscribe. Peace.